couldn't speak any word wow. until I learned from here, from uh, Utah people. And how did you learn? Did you go to school to practice learning speaking? Is um, that part of your question? Yeah. Or did friends teach you? Did you have? Well, I got uh, 100 hours one on one uh, English tutoring. She just taught me like how to speak, how to listen, understand, and speak. Mm -hmm. Didn't do much reading, writing. Mm -hmm. And then I came here, I took ESL classes like you guys are doing, mm -hmm. and I took some ESL classes at Waterloo. I took some at Horizonte or Asian, uh, Asian Center. Mm -hmm. I learned English everywhere that I could learn or I spoke to anyone even on a street uh, a stranger you know and I did not care if I speak wrong or right then you know if I did I thought if I do wrong people will correct me then I will learn more from that I wasn't shy yeah. the, the some people if you say something if they try to talk to you and if they say something wrong they don't want to talk so how do you feel? Do you want to be corrected or not corrected when you're just correct. communicating? Correct. 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 Raise your hand if you want to be corrected. Yeah. Oh. yeah. So nearly everybody in here wants to? I okay. do want to be corrected, but some people, even though that, but some people do not have a very good uh, correction. Mm -hmm. Like the way they, they just look down on you. They don't do that with uh, gentleness, politeness, you know? They just like make you feel impressed of that kind of people. I don't appreciate it. Do you have any of you experienced that where she says looking down on you, mm -hmm. making you feel small and or embarrassed? Embarrassed and important? I cannot, my illness is not good, you know? And I cannot improve. Why can't I improve? Like that? I have some of that moment and I cry. <laughs> Have any of you felt that? Felt yeah. that moment where you yeah. either wanted to cry or you did cry? No, I just <laughs> cried. Yeah, yeah. Kind of hard getting that language down, isn't it? And even when you become fluent, you still make mistakes. And when, you know what, when you're finished with these ESL classes, especially after I've taught you some of these things like parts of speech and some of those little things, you will know more than most English speakers' first language. I'm finding that in my reading 990 class now. Yesterday I was teaching a lesson on mnemonics. So I was teaching about uh, how I teach about parts of speech. And I had all of them doing this. And guess who answered all the questions? I said, OK, what does the V stand for in parts of speech? Everybody? What does V stand for? Verb. 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 What does N stand for? Noun. 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 What does A stand for? Adjective. What does P stand for? Conversation. You know those things. But if any of you walked out in the hall after class and try this, try it. Walk up to any American, and not American, I hate it when I say it, because English what does an American look like? All of us. Mm -hmm. So English speakers, native English speakers. And you walk up to them and you say, um, do you know what the, nine, the eight uh, parts of speech are in English? Well, uh, uh, let me think. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, and they're very embarrassed. Because right? <laughs> they don't know. They know. We how learned to speak it as children. Yeah. But mm -hmm. they, they, they know how to speak English correctly. Mm -hmm. That's called mental grammar. They just learn. They just listen and they learn that. No. We take that. We from, immersed ourselves in learning yeah. immersion. But mm -hmm. these vocabularies are like specialized vocabulary. Yeah. If they don't learn that, they don't know that. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. I lived in Germany for two years. Two years I lived in Germany. I was pregnant with my first baby, nine months pregnant. Had my baby in Germany. But when I got there, I was in the military in 1972. And military wives weren't necessarily given those same kind of opportunities that you have now of learning a language. So again, I lived there two years, and I can speak two German words. <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe five. Every but year, imagine, wrong words. Imagine what that was like for me. For two years, I rarely ever left my apartment. I stayed in my apartment with my baby, and I was depressed. I was so lonely and so sad, and I missed my family so bad. All I wanted to do was come back to the United States. Where, where did your husband? Becky. He was military, oh. so he what was in the Air Force. Okay. 
he had opportunities speaking with English speakers. And I had a little bit because of being an American um, an Army base or Air Force base. So yeah, I had a few people I could communicate with, but not a lot of people. I mean, not like I wanted. I wanted to feel the country. I was so excited when I went there, right? I had that honeymoon stage. And I ended up spending most of my time in the whole stage. And some of you are doing the same things to yourselves. Some of you are staying in your apartments and you're not getting out and you're not experiencing this and doing these things. And why do we do that? Because of fear. So that horror stage is brought on a lot because we have fear, afraid of change or afraid of experimenting and trying and making our world expand and get bigger and, and learning more. So yeah, horror. So now what I want you to do is I'm going to have each of you again uh, I want to put you in groups, like three to a group, and I want to mix the groups up. And I want you to just talk about your horror story. So take just a few minutes and talk about your horror story. So three of you right there. No, 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 no. The three of you right here. The th three of you back there. Uh, the three of you. I'm trying to mix them up so I get different, different people. So I'm going to join you over there. And the three of you. Okay. You talk just a few minutes about those. And you're going to be writing four things. You're going to write four things again. Remember four things that you remember that were horror stage parts of your story. Yours would be the wreck into the restaurant, <laughs> and flying on the airplane, and driving in the snow, driving on the freeway, uh, all those different things. So write four things. Wait, uh, let me let me move you up. Fong, <laughs> yeah, Fong, can she work with you? Sure. Okay. Uh, All right. Good. And uh, remember the groups you're in right now, because tomorrow you're going to get in those same groups again. So remember who your group is you're with today. And tomorrow in class we're going to continue because we're almost through today. So we're going to continue talking a little bit more about the stage and the other the honeymoon and the work together tomorrow. Good. Okay. Have fun. Kind of made it a big five group, huh? Yeah. Okay. Mom, you just fit into a five group over here. Instead of three, huh? Yeah, instead right. of three, it's five. Can you guys please introduce your names? How's your feeling in your class? I love my class. I love teaching music. Can you tell? Yes. Yes. Bye. Bye. Congo. Congo.